Have you fallen out of love with the church? Let's talk about that. Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. <music> Some great coffee in a great mug. It's one of our older ones. It says, my personal pronoun, his. And in all the arguing about pronouns, this is the one that makes the most sense, his. Anyway, in that mug, our coffee of the season. I love you very much. Blueberries and cinnamon, this is really good. And we add that to all the other blends that we have, all of our mugs, all of our t-shirts, all of our posters, our poster of the month right here, Teach, Meet, Eat, Pray. Great poster. And uh, it's also a t-shirt, also a mug. You can get all that stuff right here. We are metal, we are family dot com. Dear Pastor Bob, I'm praying to get excited about church again. I'm also in prayer to love church again. When I first started going to my new church, I was happy, I felt peace. But now I seem to have lost that joy and peace. I want to feel that way again, but how? Great question. And you know, it's a little complex and I'm not sure why you fell out of love with your church, but let's talk about this in general. You know, again, one of the important things that you and I have to do is actually define church. What is it? When we say church, most people think of a building, which it's not. And we've talked about that many times on this podcast. But how do I fall in love with people, with the church? How do I get excited about that again? You know, all of us go through emotions. There are times when I feel like being around a lot of people, and there are times when I just want to be alone for a bit. And maybe there are times that God's working on me, and I, I just kind of feel like I need to be a little bit isolated. Now, that shouldn't last very long, and if your isolation's lasting a little longer than it should, well, that's something to think about. But mostly, it's because of our expectations. And it's because of the church's performance. If you go to a spectator sport church, where you go, you listen to somebody preach, and then you go home, then likely at some point you're going to fall in love, out of love with it. Why? Because there's not much there. It is about this. Teach is only the first one. Meet, eat pray. There is a fellowship. There's a camaraderie. There's a gathering of the people who interact with each other. That's the important thing about church. And also we have to understand what it means to actually love the church and to get excited about it again. You know, a great scripture is one that you probably wouldn't expect me to turn to, but it's Ephesians chapter 5 and, uh, and verse 23. Five. I had to look that up again. Ephesians 5, 25. And it says, Husbands, love your wives. Seek the highest good for her and surround her with a caring, unselfish love, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. You know, the comparison that the Bible makes more than once is about Christ's relationship with the church being like husband and wife. You have to care for it. You know, in every relationship, we start out with the romantic phase. And uh, you, you see the other person bigger than life. You see what you want to see many times. And you say, oh, this is such a wonderful person. I don't see anything wrong with them. And then at some point, it goes into the realistic stage where you start seeing a lot of things wrong with them. And then we get to the secure stage where you say, I know that they're not perfect. I know that there's some flaws, but I love them anyway. And, you know, I think we get that way with church. And I think we go through all three stages. 
the romantic stage where you just feel great being there, the realistic stage where you understand that there are problems in every church. And if church was full of perfect people, you wouldn't be allowed there either. <laughs> and then we go to the realistic stage where you see all of that, but you really begin to enjoy this fellowship with God's people. Very important. So the same thing is true in church. As you see, it's, it's a part of the relationship that Christ has with the church, you know, being the husband and wife relationship too. It's something you nurture, it's something you grow in, and it's something that you've got to stick with. Being involved with people is messy at best. We're not always good to each other. We're not always kind. We're not always nurturing with each other. But here it is. Husbands, love your wife. Seek the highest good for her. Surround her with a caring, unselfish love. Just as Christ also did this for the church. What? Seek the highest good for the church. Surround the church with a caring, unselfish love. And when this is done, Ephesians 5.25, you'll find that your attitude begins to change and you fall in love with the people there. Now, if you don't have an opportunity to interact with them, if it's simply a spectator sport and you go home, then honestly, listen to me, you're in the wrong place. That isn't what church is. That's what teaching is maybe, but you've got all the other things. Teach is only the first part of the equation, according to Acts chapter 242. Meet, eat, pray. There's a relationship going on here that's so important. Well, folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.